I was going to say, I mean, the the point that the men are trying to get to, I think, is that women want like a more alpha dominant. This like, is, this leader. would be one of the traits. Yeah, this mm-hmm. would kind this could be thing. a popular trait. Yeah. I think the way she's saying that though is that like not being able to manipulate someone would would be one of those alpha traits. But yeah. another way could, you could say it would be to uh, have boundaries. That as long another. as there is still this element of. You saying that I have boundaries and I cannot be manipulated, you should still be able to learn from your partner or learn from other people. And when men hear the word alpha, they think that they heard something and made sense to them. They stick with it. No one can tell them anything otherwise. They're not open to learning from it. They're not open to another perspective or way of seeing things that might challenge that or change that narrative. And the, the thing that everybody's stuck on these days is everybody wants to be called the alphas. High value. And they all yeah. want to be high value. They all think that they are it, and they think that by repeating this rhetoric that everyone else in clips are saying, that they're all of a sudden becoming those men. But internally, they don't learn. They're stubborn. They think of things one-sided. There's no gray area to anything. They lack the softness to be able to be empathetic to other people. See, here's a, here's why I think it's like that's it's more emphasized right now because too many guys have been like that for too long. Meaning like everybody has has decided that they're going to align themselves with their feminine. They're going to be in, in their quote unquote feminine energy, whatever the fuck that means. But they want to be they want to seem like they're more I- feminine identifying and have been doing that really for the last four gen really since the baby boomer generation to get in touch. with. We've been told this for so long, man down, man down. And suddenly now everyone wants us to man up man all up, of a yeah. sudden. Right. Well, for four generations. We've told guys to man down, man down, get in touch with your emotions, get express yourself more, get in touch with your female side, you know, uh, you know, do some, so what they took do, it too far. Well, I think I think one of the reasons that we're sort of like seeing this is as sort of detrimental to well society in general, but like guys in general, you'll hear guys will be like these. I, I do this on my own podcast. I, I, I compare uh, different um, different uh, videos to other videos. And those videos, uh, I, I set them off to kind of compare and contrast, like the message from one to the mess to an, another message from another one, and they tend to be like conflicting messages. So you've got one one woman saying, "I want a guy who's like you know masculine and can kick ass and take names," and then you know he wants she want they want a guy who can like slit throats and change the diaper on the baby in the same day right so you've got this much like these, the guy that wants got, the virgin that's also a porn star in the bedroom exactly right. exactly so and and then I, honestly <laughs> honestly I think that's kind of ridiculous as it is but the thing is is that we've been telling guys to be feminine and to sort of identify with the feminine for so long and everyone like for we're we're now in the fourth generation since this and so now it's a shock to the system when we say, hey, we want to, we, if that's what you want, then we want to take that to the nth degree. We want to be but why? As, as much why? as possible. Why? Why can't you guys go from, I make fire. Ah, <laughs> why can't you go from that to, I make fire mm-hmm. and have, okay, and then, and then do you want to learn make baby, fire? Come in my arms. Do you want to learn how to make fire? I teach you how to because, make fire. Because, Instead of being like, or, I'll tell you, okay, well, <laughs> they're going to be first, sweet. First of, all, first of all, that's like, that's a really a binary extreme right there. Second of all is this, is that guys have been told that for so damn long right now that they that they played that card and they've used that card and hasn't bought them anything. So not be you know, playing the nice guy the nice guy card, playing the I'm going to be res- I respect women card. That ha- doesn't pay the bills when it comes to intersexual dynamics at this point. And I know it's nice to have, especially at different phases in in women's maturity. So from the from the from the time you were like say 18 to about 28 years old. You're wanting a guy that's much different than the guy that you're like going, you know what, I really want a nice guy and one really wants someone who's dependable and is not like those assholes that I used to date back when I was 18, 19, 25, whatever it was. And now I'm interested in a guy who has a little something else to him. And that guy has to also not only be respectful, but he also has to have some sort of like nice guy side to him. I, but that, that's, that's kind of like alpha with a side though. of beta or a beta with a side of alpha. This is what kills me about the, the nice guy rhetoric. You guys. Mm-hmm. Be a nice guy because you're a nice guy. Don't keep saying, but I'm a nice guy. Guys, Why aren't I not getting laid? Why am I not getting this girl? So Why am I not getting so, this? So you're so you're worried about the complaining part of it. The guy saying, I was nice all this time and I'm not getting laid for it. It sounds like that guy thinks that he deserves to get laid, right? right? The problem with that is that nice guys guys will start being nice when nice gets them laid. Nice does not that get them laid. That means that they're not nice guys. Yeah. No, 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 hold on, Jesse. Do you understand that every single proclivity that men have 
only exists because women rewarded those proclivities. Do you understand? There's oh, no, 100%. Like, like, and, I'm, and I'm not talking about in the last 10 years. I'm talking about in the last 200,000 years. 100%. Men, this is the chicken or the egg yes. debate. There's no, for any time ladies complain, oh, these men are all narcissists, then stop mm. letting narcissists mm. put their penis inside of you and stop having narcissists <laughs> babies. We don't know that they're narcissists at all well, you, you, <laughs> until you. you're too deep in. I said this the last podcast, yes. and you guys put those clips everywhere, and the comments were disgusting. The comments were, oh, here's another hoe that dated a narcissist, and she's not responsible for anything that went wrong. When you date a narcissist, the problem with them being a narcissist is you don't know that they're narcissists. Okay, so they're just Jesse, really wonderful Je people. Jesse, let me let me just point out something. Uh, I have some friends who've done the same thing where they've, uh, they've uh, dated a narcissist, and when other male figures or other figures that are outside the relationship are included, they can clearly see the guy's a narcissist. It's just the guy, the woman who's having sex with him can't. I just really think, ladies, I would just consider this. If you had a, a brother or a cousin or somebody, a third party member come in and be like, yeah, he did this and this and this and listen to their advice. But generally what happens, I had uh, was Amanda, uh, Nicole in here talking about don't get digmatized. And like, that's, <laughs> the, that's the kind of situation where it's like, you tell them and they don't listen anyway. I just, I have a feeling, maybe not in your situation, specifically but a lot of you ladies if you had had a third party come in and say hey what do you really think about my boyfriend you had some uh, situations with him like he's rude to everyone I know I can't believe you're fucking with like you might want to listen to their opinion because they're not the ones sleeping with him so their opinion might be less biased I but you're talking about on people that know them no, just go out with them. Go out like like as a couple. Can you have friends? Or as a couple, does he not allow you to you have friends? You don't have friends when you're in, with a narcissist. He doesn't even let you talk to your family. Okay, you just gave me a clear symptom of narcissism. So you can't tell me you can't tell. Michael, that no, symptom that came way later. later. Okay, that yeah. symptom came a year in. Not the first six months of love bombing and perfection where you thought this was the person you were going to die with. You were going to get buried in this freaking spot and you were going to be with this person for the rest of your life. The love bombing and the perfection, everybody at work, you know him. They know him to be wonderful. You just started dating him. You date him for seven, eight months and he's wonderful. And so you're like, yeah, that everyone says he's wonderful. And that is the mask that he wears. You're a year deep. Yeah. And all of a sudden the mask comes off and those symptoms start to come out. Okay. Okay. That's not something that was shown to you and you just ignored all your friends telling you, hey, this is really weird. Hey, this is really weird. You're not ignoring them. You're just not having okay. them happen to you in a timely fashion. So, so, so while, while and I, it only comes, like, I just want to add ahead. something. And it only comes out to her. Right, not so to everybody he, else. He yeah. Sure, no, that, I've no, seen that, that yeah. But that's a really big thing. I yeah. want to make out with you right now. Because Can I, <laughs> ooh, I think ooh. all men are narcissists, so, ooh. yeah. Um, so the thing is, from a man's standpoint, uh, a lot of times from our viewpoint, just understand this is how we see it, uh, we're watching us be super nice to girls and then not getting any attraction from it. And then we pay attention to the men who are getting the girls we like and see a very stark difference. And then we keep hearing women tell us that they want to date nice guys. I have a, I, I, let's, let's, let's table the- Hold the on, let's let, oh, John wants to say well, something. I, 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 I want to table this. No, okay, go ahead. We talk about the narc, because yeah. the reason I want to is because the, one of the Jamie Lynn clips I okay, have is, we'll, about, we'll is about narcissism. Just in reference to the video, I just wanted to say that um, the idea is that women will lose attraction and respect for men who don't pass their shit tests. So what I would like to ask the women is, do women consciously shit test men or is it an unconscious thing? Shit test. Define. Use in a <laughs> sentence. Uh, Fit fitness test. Um, basically, uh, when a man is uh, d doesn't uh, Real how, quick. have any boundaries, I suppose. Could you two move closer to Amber and could you two move closer to John, just for the camera? Go ahead, and answer John's question. Or Do you guys uh, understand? Well, I mean, so if he doesn't... if. As far as like a shit test, right? That's like a common, uh, yes, a common no, phrase no, for sure. Where it's basically uh, the idea that, um, well, well, first off, I would even ask, you know, being in love requires you to be vulnerable. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely, one hundred percent. So, how can you be vulnerable without being taken advantage of? At some point, are you allowed to let your guard down and truly trust your partner, or are they just always going to be shit testing you, and you're kind of having to kind of uh, make sure that uh, no boundaries are crossed? I, 
in relationships when things happen i don't see them as tests i see them as something that we both get through together Mm -hmm. on the same conscious level of like this is how we would handle this if it were to arise but as far as like girls that test guys that what you mean yeah like let me see what he would do if my girlfriend hit on him or something like that yeah i don't again test his loyalty that is a form of manipulation and i don't function that way so i can't relate do do you think many women function that way i've done a kind of a, a little test i wouldn't call it uh-huh. a test yeah. you know what i mean but kind of like when i decided to bring a guy around my friends or my group of friends sure you know what i mean like how do you like we get wild we do crazy shit when we're out together like how do you feel how does it make you feel when you hang out with us like are, are you having fun or, or all, are you having fun with my friends you know or are you sitting off in a corner somewhere not being social like Either it could be okay, but it just tells me, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. If we again are on the same frequency, can I let me let me throw? So some. I don't. Call I feel like that's it like more observation test, than testing. Like, and is it that's real, why I said I don't really it, call it a test, but yeah. in the same but point in time, is it like, a conscious thing though? Is what I'm asking. I don't think so. I think it's I think it's completely subconscious. I think that women. Well, I mean, so women will actually acknowledge it occasionally, but it's usually when it's like so overt that they can't not, you know, you know acknowledge it. I I think I have done that. So when I'm out with my husband and like my best girlfriends or whatever, if he doesn't open the door for them or shut the door for them, I will lose my shit. See, that's an act. Te- that's an act. I will test. be really upset. And I tell him we went to the beach and this girl was trying to lug this igloo cooler thing that was bigger than she was. She was four foot eight. And she's lugging it up these steps to get to her car. And he's just standing there. And I'm like, he's like, well, I don't want you to feel like I'm overstepping boundaries. Like, bro, a woman is a woman. You know, respect and gentleman is not just towards one you, woman. You do Can I touch on this? You do know that if you're in San Francisco, did the same exact thing, he's going to get fucking way late for that, right? You're like, I, I, I understand what you're saying, Jesse, but it's like, this is something that happens whenever, sometimes I deal with women, is they're like, I feel very strongly that men should do this. And in the last relationship, he was with a woman who felt the complete opposite. Do you understand that? Like, if you you have to say that to him. If you don't say that to him, he's not going to know. I have, though. Okay, good. Did you you have, uh, do you guys see the Curb Your Enthusiasm I episode? I say something. Hold on, we'll get to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's an episode <laughs> of Curb Your Enthusiasm where Larry David, like, there's, like, he's not supposed to have the, the, uh, the, the limo driver help his bags, but it's this tiny little woman. And so he does it. She's like, what are you trying to help me with my bags? Are you fucking chauvinist? And then he, she picks him up. She can barely hold the bags. And everyone's staring at him like, bro, why aren't you helping her with the fucking <laughs> yeah. bags? It's like that for us sometimes. Well, the, so here's the oh, thing. By the way, look, you know there's women out there that if you hold the door open for your girlfriend, fine. If you hold the door open for other women, she that woman me. will trip. Literally so you have to understand. Ladies, just so we're clear, just so we're clear, just because you like a thing doesn't mean every woman likes a thing. Hence you have a why lot, I said I can't relate. When you ask yes. questions sometimes on these like and Jesse, I, I agree. I Jesse, I agree. You you yeah. you do things that are very different from the from the middle of the standard deviations. Go ahead. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk to yeah. Lindsay first. Lindsay, go ahead. So Lindsay, I wanted go. to say about that. I was like, you know, that is one of my actual favorite silent tests. Like, if a guy opens the door for me, because that is the only way you can unlock the next achievement level where I reach over <laughs> and open the, the door for you. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? And I love that. I she love doing love that. Yeah, but do you love it I'm for with. you? Yes, and, and I have so much fun with it because it is with. a fun little game. But well, just, I'm not usually with, uh, you know, that scenario. Where let's say if we were all going together tomorrow to Dead Mouse, and your man was going to meet up with us. You were walking through a door. I mean, that, if yes, he holds that's, it a nice, for you, that's a nice, respectable thing to do. Okay, you know, but you're not. I, what if I that? hold no, the door okay. open for your man? Is that okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, if I hold the door yeah, open for okay. your man, yeah, so that's what if nice. I smack him on the I ass as he walks in? Is that fine? I love how a shit test. I love how a shit test is just reduced to opening a fucking door. I mean, like there's so many other ways that women test that have nothing to do. No, that's so fun though because I like opening the door for him, but you only get that if you open it for me. I'd like to ask a panel a question about opening up a door. <laughs> why? Okay. Why was holding the? Uh, why has holding the door open become gender neutral when entering a building? But you'll never see a woman opening up a car door for a man. Damn! I open the car door for my husband all the time, so I don't know. I can't relate. I don't know. I don't know. But that again was but, taught generations ago that that was part of being a gentleman. Okay, and and obviously some women find chivalry to be patronizing, while other women expect it. So. As far as passing those tests, I mean, sometimes women will, you know, say, hey, he didn't offer to do this. And so basically the man is guilty before he even knows what the woman expects out of him. There's two extremes right now because we're leaving one like era of dating and entering another one. We're in a transitional period. So yeah. We left yes. that we're a long a, time No, no, ago. we haven't <laughs> left it. We're in a mixed bag. Some women still really want the traditional this. 
and they still value that and that's how their families were and there's still so, younger women coming in that came from a house that didn't have those values and they don't want those things they don't they want to feel independent they want to feel like they did it themselves and the, the thing is that men keep trying to go for the woman that's in this bag while they're in this bag and the women keep going for the men that are in this bag while they're in this bag everyone needs to date on their level date in their era and date in their traditions that's so, it so what is the incentive for women to change when they can currently pick and choose the best of both worlds if we're transitioning what are we transitioning to like i just said just find someone that has the same values as you like guys want to date the hottest girls and then they're mad when those girls don't want to settle down with them cheat on them party all the time stop dating the party girl Mm -hmm. Stop telling me that you're 45 years old and you want to date the 20 year old because she's, you know, youthful and that's what men want and we want untouched. But then you're trying to lock down a 19 year old that doesn't want that all part right, of your life. All right, all right. That's not what she's looking for. When she's 19 and 20, she's just graduated high school. She uh, wants a little, she wants but, a little bit of life to be lived. But it also, it also depends go. on how. And they then were, men want to hate women and say, "Oh, well, look at how these women just do us dirty." You're dating the wrong kind of woman. Well, it's That's because your right now women want 20th century ideals. They want 20th century quote unquote chivalry, which is bullshit to begin with. But <gasps> it's, they they want this 20th century sensibilities, but they want 21st century privileges in that they want to pick and choose what it is that they want at any particular because time. Because we were held back because, so significantly oh, oh, for but, so long. So, Zoe, Damn right, right, we do. Zoe, okay. Zoe you, you look like you had an opinion here. Zoe, Zoe's ready to go. Oh, I don't. I was just thinking that I, uh, before we started this, I should have used the restroom. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Miss Monrare. I had, Monrer. I had, I had a, I opened the door for a guy ahead, yesterday, Lindsay. and he said, don't you ever open the door. And I looked at him, and I was like, ooh, it sent tingles to my happy place. I was oh, like, Lord. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of See? what I was thinking about. I'm thinking, like, what man would want a female to open the door for him. Okay, we've gotten way off the subject. The yeah, subject was about yeah. shit tests. So yeah. for, you, for, those, for those of you guys who don't understand, we live in two different worlds. Uh, we experience life differently as men and women. As a man, I will tell you throughout my entire life, women shit test me and have shit tested other men constantly, incessantly, all the time, and it is absolutely subconscious and you don't even know that you're doing it. Did you fail or pass? No, no. in the beginning I would fail because I would answer the shit test or get reactive. Later on, once I realized, oh, that's not what this is about, it's just trying trying to poke the bear to see if I, they get a reaction. And then when you don't get the reaction, you're showing you pass the test. That's essentially what Tori, happens. Tori, give me a shit test right now. Go. Do you really think I can give you a shit see, test See, that's a shit right test right, right, right there. Exactly. That's right there. Exactly. Yes. No, but there's... a lot of times girls think that's flirting. Like they don't think that it's actually testing your worth. And but, I yeah, say this they, all the because time. Because they don't. They don't realize that that's part, that's part of the subconscious side of things. Uh, there's there's active shit tests and there's passive shit tests. For, the, for all the shit tests are meant to determine fitness. Is this guy the motherfucker that I think he actually is? Is he the guy that he's saying, if you're fronting and saying, I'm an alpha male, right? If you give him this, oh, he thinks he's an alpha male, fine. How about if I go in and try to get him in a fight with this guy over here and see if, see if he can like kick kick ass and take names? That's an, ex he, that's an extreme example. And I know, Jesse, you would to, never do that, Jesse. Do I know that, that. but, but some women do that. It's to, it's to determine, is this guy the best I can do? So when women are first meeting a guy and they're having this t this conversation with him, they want to know that he's a good conversationalist and he could carry on it. And he's actually he's if he says he's made partner in the in in the law firm, he better not be a fucking sandwich artist at Subway, okay? <laughs> so you have to find some way to determine whether or not that guy is actually who he says he is. How do you do that? You can't just go front on him like there. What you have to do is you just have to say, well, you know, are you the kind of guy that would do this? Are you the kind of guy? Is he the kind of guy? that would uh, oh, hold the door open for somebody? Is he the kind of guy who would protect me if somebody was gonna attack me on the street? Is he the best I can do? That's prior to getting into a relationship. Once people are in marriages and they're in long-term relationships, the shit tests change. It's how come you didn't take out the trash? How come you didn't mow the lawn? How come we don't make as much money? Mom, my mama was always right about you. I knew, I knew you were, would never amount to anything. Those kinds of things, those are shit tests because it's did I make the right decision is he the best that I can do? And if he fails enough of those, then we go see the, the divorce attorney. Then we say, you know what? Hey, this isn't working. We get gonna, to the ick. We're not going to make it. Then we get to the ick. Then we get to the ick. Okay, do you want to yes. do, do uh, go to another one of these clips or do you want to talk well, about to just, uh, Jamie? We, we, well, we will in here. So we'll go to another clip here, but I just also wanted to point out that Sadia Khan is completely wrong when it comes to hypergamy. Okay. Absolutely 100%. What she's talking about is one side of hypergamy, which is the, be the beta buck side, mm -hmm, which yeah. is the resources. It's the protection, provisioning, and parental investment side. Yeah. Nothing to every, every last bit that she said there is all based on transaction. 
everything she talks so, so, about is based on transactional. He wants this, he wants the pussy, then he better be able to give me this, 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 and this, and I need some benefits. Okay. That's pretty much what it comes down to, and she's completely lost. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, because it was just a clip, and I've been misquoted in well, 90 I've seen clips. a lot of her Okay, stuff so this is what I think. What she's saying is there's a bunch of different circles for what women want, and all the circles merge and are concentric in this one area f where we don't want a man who can ma manipulate us. It doesn't mean that's the only thing every woman wants with every man that makes every woman attracted to every man, but it is something that women in co have commonality that they want. That's why I agree and, with and, what you're and, saying. And, uh, well, and then again, it comes back to the shit test, as he was saying here yeah. before. Is, the is shit test he, is the is manipulation he, that we're referring to. Yes. Guy, is he the guy yeah. that he purports, he, he builds himself out to be? Because why in our evolutionary past, our ancestral past, a woman could die if she made the wrong decision with the wrong guy. So if the guy can trick her into having a baby with her and he's not actually an alpha male, he can't actually provide, he's actually dead weight, he's a, a narcissist, he's a drug addict or Has whatever. Has this ever happened? You've you had, find later you've on. You've had dead weight, that alpha, so beta male? Has this happened My to you? My baby daddy. Your baby daddy? Tell, <laughs> tell us about your baby daddy. Oh, no. Go ahead. He's just... He's dead weird. Well, but when you first met him, okay, so let's go through this. You meet him, you're physically attracted perfect. to him. He was perfect. He tell was tell perfect. me, he, like, he looked perfect. Yeah. How'd you meet him? How'd you meet him? Um, Just in a bar. You met him in a bar. You're yeah. talking to him in a bar. He yeah. was, was he smooth? Did you know you wanted to sleep Absolutely. with him immediately? Immediately. Physically, he, you knew you wanted to sleep with him? Most attractive was man I've seen. Most attractive man you've ever seen. Yeah. And then you hung out with him in the first couple of weeks. What was it like? Like I was a princess and I, love bombing. It was absolutely lots love of love bombing. bombing. Okay, he was a complete narcissist. Okay, and manipulated me. And How do you manipulate you? What, what do you do specifically? Just like everything, everything that he did was just like I can't even explain it. It's like you, you don't realize it's happening when it's happening. Okay, let me ask you something. So, now, from what you've seen, if you saw this happening to one of your friends, or if some other dude tried to do this to get you, out would of you, there. you, but you would, would you be able to pick it out faster? Absolutely. Now? Okay, cool. That's what I'm saying. There are people out there that can help you. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Mm -hmm. What were the red flags? Yes. That, you, that you ignored. There was a lot. So, like, I wasn't allowed to like go out with my girlfriends. Like, basically, my family was cut off. I couldn't do anything. Everything had to be with him. Sure. And it got to the point where like I wouldn't even leave the house. It was just him, 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 him. And then like the accusations and like making me feel like I was the problem. Mm. Did he ruin holidays and birthdays for you? Absolutely. And, yes. I wasn't. I didn't get any gifts for my birthday, yep. and it was because even though he I loved bombing in the beginning, yep. then all that got taken I was away. The problem. Yeah. And then it came down to it, and it was like I started realizing I was like, oh no, I was like, what did I get myself into? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but you're too far in now. Exactly, yeah. you're in love at that point, and like you're willing to accept that kind of behavior. You're at hoping that, that point. he'll change, and that's what yeah. we would discuss the last sure. time. Mm -hmm. That you're just hoping that this person is in a bad way and doesn't realize how bad what they're doing. What, what we're saying, I, like, I was okay with him acting like that as long as he was there, which is how badly he manipulated me. Um, yes. We're talking about maybe the five month period. What, what, what point did this happen? It was like pretty instantaneous. Oh, so he was, it it was very like, quickly started turning into a narcissist. It was like two months in. Okay, yeah. two months in. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot. There's a few books on this about borderline narcissism and psychopathy, stuff like this, and it's usually around the, the, five, part of the uh, five month period. The cluster B, cluster B, per, cluster B personality disorders. Was it uh, MPD, narcissistic personality, borderline, borderline. personality, histrionic personality, and antisocial, antisocial. Anti yeah, yeah, those are the four. Bad, mad, bad, and sad. Bad or well, we've we've done B. more psychology than any of these clips that I've already looked at. Yeah, in exactly. The last half hour. That's interesting. I'm always interested <laughs> to hear this because what the the thing is that's fine, and I feel like you get one free. Everyone does. Mm -hmm. But when you do two or three, do you know the girl who's done this before? The last three exes are narcissists, <laughs> and she's been engaged five times. That girl, and she doesn't. Go ahead. We all know that girl. Yes, <laughs> that's my point. I feel. I feel like you all get the first one free. Everybody gets the first. We all look when we're young. We don't know. Love feels good. It's good. To, it's fun to love. Love. I love love. Right. It feels great. But then after a while, it's just like, wait a second. I poured my whole motherfucking shit into this, and then it didn't come back out the way that I thought, and then it changes things, and now you start to see red flags and those red flags don't mean anything to you especially i'm speaking just from a man standpoint when you're a young horny dude in college those red flags don't mean shit she has a drinking problem sounds
sounds great. Sounds like a green flag to me. Sounds great. She's covered in tattoos. Sounds great. When, when you're in your 20s, later on as a man, when you, have, when you have some experience, you're like, that's fucking red flag. Seems like a really cool girl to have on my show, but not going to fucking date her. You know what I'm saying? So that's the way I look at it. Not specifically anyone here. Huh? Not specifically anyone here. No, nobody here. You guys are all great. There's no red flags right, here. Wait, hold up. We got it. We got even, it. even seven holes over there. She's not, there's no red flags. <laughs>